I'm on a call with myself. I'm on a Zoom call with myself, but I'm really excited about today's session with Easy with Aces. Once again, today's coaching session will be the first session that we have with Finten. Finten is a professional poker player and poker stars ambassador also an epic streamer he has been streaming poker already for a while and poker is trending lately on twitch it has been one of the top categories recently on the entire platform so i'm really looking forward to seeing more into the poker world i think there's a lot in common in general i do think that chess and poker have a lot in common a lot of chess players too play poker and a lot of poker players like chess so we're gonna be talking about the two worlds for sure and also i'm gonna try to do my best to help finten become a pock champ because he is one of the participants of pock champs number two he'll be joining us shortly on the call hello hello finten can you hear me i can indeed I'm hey so happy to Hi. talk to you again. <laughs> it's great. Thank you very much um, for trying to get me a little bit better at chess. Prepare for Pog Champs too. I'm going to give you this full shout out because this is what I found when I Googled for anyone in my stream who doesn't know Anna. She's a Hungarian chess player holding the feet of titles of international master and woman grandmaster. She's a popular chess personality, having worked as a commentator analysis at many major tournaments, including the 2016 World Chess Championships and 2018 World Chess Championships. Boom. Let's go. I feel like that that's too flattering. Half of it is not true. Half it's not true. <laughs> it cannot be true. Someone else just made it up. Someone made it up for my Wikipedia to to make me sound like I'm interesting. No, I don't believe that. I have heard you doing commentary before when Alexandra Aww. used to do the Saturday tournaments between the women and mm -hmm. it was always unbelievable. High energy. So I'm hoping Hold on, I have to grab your camera actually. One second. I don't have Sure, sure, screen. take your time. I'm just adjusting your camera too. I, I'm a boomer, so yeah, it brings of... me real close <laughs> in the Zoom meeting, so I apologize. My head is quite big, but it's not as big as this is looking. I think um, it's good if you I, have I, a big head. That will that will intimidate all the other POC champs. You think so? Yeah, yeah big brain, big yeah, head. That's exactly how it goes exactly. Okay. That sounds great. We got higher star in the chat. Right. So I just got told uh David Pacman has been playing well. That's the first person that's been mentioned in my chat. Have you been coaching him? No, coaching Alex him? is coaching David. So we're going to have a rivalry there in terms of coaching. <laughs> I need to know who you're going to be coaching because here's what I'm scared of, right? I think I'm just not going to tell anyone what openings I'm going to play because if the good coaches know what openings I'm going to play, they're just going to tell people, oh, this is how you explain it. And I'm only <laughs> going to be able to remember a few moves and I don't want the game over. So I think I'm just going to play very basic openings and then you can help me maybe with the middle game or whatever you think is the best suggestion because you're the coach, you're the one who knows what you're doing. But I don't think I want to like get a load of opening theory. Yes, I wasn't going to teach just... you any opening today. I talked to your other coach, Levy, and he updated okay. me on the openings that you guys have studied together. I also watched I'm some of the VOD. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even telling Levy because he's coaching packing as well as what I heard. Oh, I'm not, I'm not getting see. double crossed by people. <laughs> I'm coming to win. <laughs> well, he I'm told me some of the openings he is about to teach you. So you'll you'll have the openings that he teaches you on live stream, I'm the not, fake openings, so and you're gonna have your real <laughs> openings behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, honestly, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm coming to win, and I'm not coming to be double crossed by someone who, because all them listen. I I've swindled my way into this competition <laughs> because I played chess from like just before it blew up. I feel yeah. Everyone else is bigger, so. I'm no one's gonna want me to win. I'm gonna be the villain. So I can't I can't have like Levy teaching me something, but behind my back he's teaching David and whoever else the exact response to it. So I'm absolutely out for that. Like no chance. I don't trust I'm I'm listen, I play poker, it's the same as chess, you're in it for yourself. I'm not I'm not trusting anyone, Anna. I trust you because you seem like the sweetest person that I've ever encountered in my life, but I'm still not one hundred percent sure yet. I'll decide by the end of the lesson. I'm, I'm glad we are starting <laughs> on the right foot. <laughs> Finta doesn't trust anybody. <laughs> no, but I totally yeah. get you. I totally get you. Oh, I don't. Hold on. You're, 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 you, you, talk, you, I haven't got your, uh, I haven't got your camera up yet. One <laughs> no worries. No worries. I'm glad that you said what you said about openings because I wasn't gonna teach you any opening. So thank you, Nikolai. Levi does have some ideas on on what other openings you may want to learn, but you can also tell him that you don't want, you're not interested in openings. I think I think I think I think Levi wants uh, Levi wants the glory of one of the bigger streamers to uh, have him as the coach. I think I just 
I just don't trust them. I'm well, not, for what it's worth, <laughs> for those in the chess community, I'm not being serious. Like, I'm not, I'm not being serious. I actually, just, I act, the main reason I'm saying this is because I don't think that I'm going to win or lose in the opening. Like, I'm sure mm-hmm. everyone's going to blunder and make mistakes. And yeah. I don't think it's worth the majority of the time I'm going to spend learning. Exactly. I was going to say the same, that it's it's good to have an opening. You need to you need to know how you're going to develop your pieces and some basic ideas and plan. But everything will be decided in the middle game. Loose pieces, tactical motives, miss, checkmates here and there. So a lot of tactics. I don't know if you solve tactics regularly, puzzles, but that can help do. a if lot. I don't, if I don't get the 1600 in uh, puzzles by tomorrow, I have to give someone in my community $100. And I'm at 1400 so I've got to grind tonight. Whoa, now that now that's yeah. good motivation. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we've got the puzzles ticked. I was going to <laughs> suggest that you do that on your own, but we're going to be doing calculation and visualization exercises today as well. But puzzles Perfect. on your own as regularly as you can. I do think it's more important to have to do it frequently, even if it's a shorter time, even if it's five, ten minutes, it's better to do it as often as you can, like every day if you can. I it's will, better than worry, having a two hour session once a week. No, I'm committed to every day until awesome. the podcast awesome. is over. Okay. Excellent. Sweet. So we have the puzzles covered. You're going to hide your openings as we discussed. <laughs> and we're going to be focusing today on middle game strategies. I'm going to give you a couple of your own positions. I've been looking at your games. I've selected some of okay. the critical moments where we might okay. improve on how to find the right plan, how to find how to execute the right idea and also end game technique. I thought we can work on a little bit. So mainly middle game strategies and principles as well as end games and calculation, lots of visualization. So those will be okay. today's task if you agree. Yeah, I trust you. You're the, you're the professional. Whatever All right. you say. We're going to start with an end game that you played against LE792. I'm going to invite you to an analysis board so that you don't have to um, bring up the game separately and then we can we can see exactly the same position. Let me let me open one mm-hmm. right now. Hearthstar, you're being awfully sassy today. Does Hearthstar hang around in your community all the time? Because, yes. Like, he's, not, he's, usually, he's usually quite the big supporter and I feel like he's trying to look cool in front of the chess community because he knows there's a few extra ones here. <laughs> No, Harster. Harster is an MVP in the chess community too, and uh... MVP is, 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 is yeah, MVP. We, we call him something different over here, but anyway. <laughs> I was just going to add when you said that you don't trust Levy. Levy also coaches Cutie Cinderella, just so that you know. <laughs> Absolutely, honestly, like honestly, I'm 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 going solo. You're the only person I trust right now. So <laughs> Thank if you. you let me down if there's any any broken trust or anything, like I'm going solo. I'll be like one of those guys who's facing 200 years in the, or the death penalty. And I'm like I'm just representing myself. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> I hope we don't get there. I'm I'm gonna try to help you as much as I can. And uh, do you see the? Oh shoot! I was gonna say, do you see the position? But I'm booming. I realized I haven't even invited you. I'm would moving. I trust Alexandra? The last person I would trust is Alexandra. <laughs> no, absolutely no chance. Like no chance at all. And uh, she's okay, trading sorry. David, so yeah, there, there's gonna be a lot. <laughs> oh, absolutely no chance. She's already she's had her opportunity. Uh, to be my friend and she's uh, absolutely ruined it so no <laughs> chance all right i'm in observing and boards love the right thank you for the bids can you see the position now after h5 does it show you the current position i'm looking at? against le792 yes yeah yeah oh hold on a second my board is let me just sure take okay. your time be off and thanks to everybody for the support. I don't know what we are doing on a hype train right we are just starting the session but i really appreciate everyone's support and go and support Fintan just as much. Oh, you're fine. I have you're a command fine. easy with aces. So you're doing, you're doing mark, your work for charity by coaching me, so you don't need to <laughs> no. suggest anything along those lines. It's exclamation uh, mark easy with aces, guys, and go and I'm, check out his I'm, channel. I'm, I'm black here, right? Yes. So this was a game you played recently. I thought you played really well, the middle game stage. So h4, bishop f6, all, all these moves made a lot of sense. And then you won the d5 pawn. And after h5, this is looking scary because the white queen pinning the pawn on g6 and h5, I I thought that your opponent was trying to scare you, but you reacted with a very cool rook g5 that led to this queen trade. So after the queens were off of the board, you took on h5 
and your opponent play rook a d1. This is the position I wanted to start with. So I'd like you to tell me what you see on the board. You were playing this with the black pieces. Um, do you remember this position? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said oh. that it, it's a Karpov I mean, Kasparov. I, 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 <laughs> I think I, what did you just this is you tell me what did you say there it was it, a carp of Kasparov is is this a carp of Kasparov maybe I mean I might have confused the position <laughs> no I can promise you right now that there is no intention at any point and I don't know any famous chess position so I certainly wasn't trying to mimic anything um I I, 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 I my plan was to push the pawn up uh, the h file um, and him not be able to take uh, my pawn because uh -huh. he would be in check um but I don't know what I did from here. Um, <clears throat> obviously, if he puts me in check, I can just take with the um, rook on the d-file. And then if he takes that, I can just push my king. But then I'm going to lose the pawn on c7 because he's going to check me and take. Um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know what I did, and I, I, I don't know what I should do. But that's what I see when I look at it. Yes, that, that's a good first assumption of the position. And as you said, that white may be threatening rook d8 check or rook to d7. Those two squares are important in this position. You played yeah. king g7. Um, it's it's a good instinct that you want to activate the king in end games. I think you know that okay. principle that uh, in end games, the king becomes a very active I'm piece. going to lose the pawn straight away though. Yeah, the that's the issue with it. Seven. So let's... Uh, let's try to think about this position a little bit um, in terms of how can you deal with your opponent's threat. So white has just doubled rooks on the d file and is threatening rook d7 or rook d8 check. Both could be an option for white. What do you think you can do in order to not lose your pawns on the seventh rank? Um, I can have no idea. <laughs> no clue. I think... Uh... I, I don't know. I think, I don't know because I, I if I push my pawn forward one yeah. on the C file, um, obviously it threatens his, uh, but like he's going to move it. So that's, it's not actually a threat in the sense that like his plan, I think was to go down to either D7 or D8. So then I can push. Okay. So where, where, where what do we assume he does next? Like, cause I'm, I'm not out here like being able to talk about six, seven moves at a time. Okay. All right. All you right. know what I mean? Tell me, tell me what I need to react to, and I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's suppose, let's suppose your opponent nicks this move and tries yeah. to take your b7 pawn. I pushed b5. You pushed b5. Okay. Let's now suppose I'm gonna attack your c6 pawn in case you'll give it to me finally. I'm scared, and I don't think I can do anything. I've messed up, haven't I? Um, I've messed up. Can I protect this still? No, you're right. The pawn is gone. I did not play the best move for white. That felt, just... like <laughs> felt like a trick question on it. What are we going to do to save the pawn? Why don't you just say you lost your pawn, do better beforehand, <laughs> instead of making me stare at the board, wondering what I can do. I'm trying to pull a poker impression, all right? <laughs> okay. So I've obviously messed up earlier in this. Um, uh, also after okay. c6 what you said too this check is annoying too because after the check so i'm just showing another option for white mm -hmm. after the pawn push with this is probably even better because then they play rook to d7 with the check and then take the pawn so the yeah. seventh rank and the back rank in this position both are very important you cannot protect both in one move obviously uh, but then mm -hmm. let's focus on what can you protect or what how can we deal with this do i bring my rook back to g7 Yes. So if you bring back your rook, that does take care of the seventh rank. And if now I give this check, I would have, I would, I would have to take it right. You take it. Option. Yeah. You, you take it. Or are you doing it? Okay. I can play it if you want to. And now when white gives this check, after you step out of the check, your rook is protecting the pawns and you're offering okay. a rook trade. What do you think about the rook trade in this position? Who does it favor? I think, it's, I, I think, I don't know, but I think it favors me because he's attacking my tree pawns right now. Yes, it favors you uh, because of that, because of the white rook being really active. And also, how many pawns does black have and how many white? 
I don't know, Anna, but if I was playing it, it's like a little plus one. Uh, <laughs> have to count them. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're up a pawn, so we want to trade if we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're okay. up to pawns, so you do want to get into a king and pawn game. That would be quite a simple win. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So rook g7 is a great move because of uh, covering the seventh two? rank. I'm up to two pawns. Did I, did I count wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'm not. Who's in the chat? Who's I, can, own that game? You need to. Am I counting wrong? It's seven against six. No. Um, I thought you're up two pawns, I but my eight? maths is terrible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the eight pawn? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I missed one. All right, everyone, calm down. I I need to use my fingers. I didn't want to do it in front of Anna's community. <laughs> counting the eight is tough. It's, it's all right. Listen. Listen, I tried my best. We definitely want to trade. We're up two pawns on it, if you didn't yes, know. Yes, we do want to trade. Two pawns up. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> we are doing it. Excellent. Rook g7 is a great move. And uh, as you said, that after the trade, you will be protecting the pawns on the 7th rank. So I'm going to try to trick you. I'm going to play this move. How would you react to rook to d7? I don't know. <laughs> um... <laughs> I would. Not take it. Good, because if you do take it, then we end up in the position that we didn't want when the opponent's yeah. rook is really active, attacking all our pawns on the seventh. Mm -hmm. So, so do you want me to tell you what I would do then? Yes. Uh, I would move my king to f8. I don't know if that's. Oh, with... oh no, because I can't take his. Uh, hold on, let me think. Sure. Um... <clears throat> I don't know, Anna. Uh, maybe bring my. I don't know if I want to get my king out of there, but I could bring my rook to f7 and start bringing my king up the board on that side, but I don't know. It's the truth. Mm hmm. Uh, you want to bring the g7 rook now to f7 to be able to bring up the king. Yeah. Okay, B without making the move, I'd like you to visualize that you place the rook on f7 mm -hmm. and try to think of a response to that as white. What do you think could be a good move there for white? How to continue? I don't know. He can check me, but then I just take him, uh, and then he checks me again. But then I can get out with my castle, so I don't. I don't know. Yeah, Andrew. check would be one option. Let, let's just visualize the rook on f7 and think of some of the ideas we have seen earlier for white. I know. I don't know. You can do this, Vinton. You can do this. Um, so white would like to be the king of the seventh rank and capture oh, all okay, your pawns. So he, if, okay, so he can take my. Oh yeah, okay. So he takes and he checks and he gets the pawn. So sorry, he takes with the d seven, mm -hmm. and then I take with my king and then he checks and then he takes the c pawn and then probably gets another pawn. Yes. And then I don't have two plus pawns anymore. Yeah, very good. This is this is the danger. They will take your rook and then start capturing the pawns. At least one, if not more. For that reason, we need to be really careful in this rook end game. So rook g7 was a crucial move, um, but now we need to see whether we can continue along that line. So white is threatening to take your rook and give a check on d7, which will pick up the c7 pawn. Can you visualize that? I, I can see it happening, yeah, but honestly, it doesn't seem... It, it seems like I'm... Right, in a time control, I guess yeah, obviously you're, you're training me to get there, but like this looks like I'm gonna lose that pawn no matter what I do. Now I know there is some sort of solution, but I'm scared. All right, I'm scared. I think I'm gonna lose the pawn. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to think about this. So, but it's I okay to be I can't, scared. I can't visualize a, a road out of here. I would. I just <laughs> like you know what? Just have a pawn. We're playing a friendly game here. Just take a pawn. You'll give I'll it to just... your opponent. Okay, that's fair enough. You still have another one extra, so you start with two extra ones and you give one back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 2020, people aren't nice enough. Yeah, it's totally fine to give the pawn back, but I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make you think outside the box and discover moves that you probably wouldn't find natural. Because the next move, Rook G7 was already not a very easy move to spot. Like 
going backwards usually making a, a rook have to retreat is not something that you would normally want to do and also in this position of the rook d7 rook g7 rook d7 there's another ugly move we need to play and if if we want to protect this pawn so what do you think could be a solution Me <laughs> you can tell me what piece I need to move. Or is um, that too obvious then? You only have uh, three options. I have three options. Okay. Um, I mean, in terms of what piece, but I'm not going to tell you the square. Okay. <clears throat> this feels like I could just stare at it all day. Um, no, no, you can do this. One sec. Well, I'm just going to put my uh, chat in subscribers mode because when we're playing chess, people just can't help but uh, oh. show moves at me. I like, I know, I don't mind. Uh, I'm not reading your chat, so it's just my chat. The subs up to it. Um, I don't know. Oh, I mean, <clears throat> I guess start getting the pawns out of there, but I just feel like if I move the C pawn or the B pawn, then there, there's still one pawn that's in the same situation. Yeah, you are right that unfortunately this is too slow if you move either the C or B pawns because they will still take your rook and yeah. give a check and capture the other one. Mm -hmm. So so you know what the opponent wants. If we were to make mm -hmm. any random move, they will take. This is what they want. They will take and give you a check and pick mm -hmm. up the pawn. So do you in, think the person that I'm playing against, did, did they find this move in game? Like, do you think that the level I'm playing against, they'll find this move to take the pawn every time? I know that's not like why you should teach me it, because it's obviously good to know the theory and protect it in case they do. But I probably never would have seen what's going on here. That's true. That's, that's a good point, but I, wanna, I want you to no, be five know, steps ahead of the competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, considering Levy's trying to make me lose on purpose, I guess that's nice. Um, <laughs> No, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. On it. I, I can't see it. I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, if really in this know. position, just look at the position as it is. So you're in check. Uh, but imagine that if you could just change the location of any other piece I, I except put my for pawn the king. On C, on C7. You would want your pawn somewhere. Sorry, not my pawn. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, I want my pawn somewhere because I was going to say. No, no, no. I, I was just asking that if that's what you said. I, no, I no, let I meant, you think. I meant to say. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I meant. To say I'll cover my c7 pawn with my rook because then he can't take it. Yes, excellent. So if you had your rook on c8, he wouldn't be able to take it. Yeah. So that means that in our starting position, when the rook is threatening to take on g7, as ugly as it is, the right move is. Okay, so c8. Rook to c8. Rook. Yeah, it's okay. it's a really ugly move. Um, so instead of the h6 <laughs> move, I play there to waste the time. Rook c8, and now if the rook is taken, you are in the yeah. same position, but with the pawn protected. This is ugly. It's a very passive rook. This is not what we dream of, but you have two extra pawns. So the first yeah. task was to save those pawns, and then you will make further progress. And your king has okay. already been activated, so that's, that's already a big improvement. Your king is okay. out of the back rank, and the pawn is protected. And because the pawn is protected, now you will have the time for what you wanted to push the B pawn, then you can push the A pawn and push the C pawn. So slowly but surely, you could get out okay. of this cage where your pawn is hanging. Okay. Man, one of my long-time subs uh, just resubbed. I don't know if you've seen on my Twitter yesterday that I told my fiance if she beats me. She only started playing chess. I saw it. I saw it. I was I like, maybe I should train there. her now, not you. <laughs> she got so many offers. Alexandra didn't offer to coach me for PogChamps, but was straight in there with an offer to coach Hannah. She just, everyone wants to see me lose the bag. And uh, they're saying I'm only getting these lessons to avoid buying the bag, not to actually win pog champs. And I'm not going to lie, they're, 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 they're not wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> well, a channel bag at stake, so I understand. I, know, <laughs> I understand I Hannah fully. You're not trying to sabotage me as well, are you? No, like, not at actually, all. No, <laughs> no, no way. Man. Like, why would I? <laughs> I'll, be send, I'll be sending you an invoice for a Chanel bag if that's what I find out is going down. <laughs> All right, so I, I learned how to protect my pawn, even though it took me longer than the full game would have lasted, but we got there. Yeah, but this position is is not just about finding how you can keep the pawns, how you can save your pawns on the seventh rank, but also about the importance of the seventh rank in general. Have you heard of of um, rooks on the seventh? How how powerful they are, whether it's with a check no. or without. So imagine, um, if we were to have this position, um, rooks on the seventh 
from white's perspective and rook on the second rank from black perspective it's extremely um, strong in middle games and end games for various reasons in this position for instance i'm sure you can see how the rook on the yeah, seventh king. rank yeah it's cutting your king you cannot activate it you you cannot step yeah. away from the back rank it's pinning it down to the back rank and most of your pawns will be on the seventh rank at least some of them the the base of the pawn chains will be on the seventh rank so it's it's uh bad for your king either they can attack okay. your king or cut it and also, they will start attacking so your pawns. So let's try and get the rooks on the seven rank if we can. Yes. So we obviously not all the time, but if there's a good situation, don't pass it by. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. this is for for attacking purposes too. That you should aim for this when you play a middle game or end game with rooks on open file. Try to get the rook into the second or seventh rank. Okay. Noted. Excellent. Excellent. And now you know that you should also try to prevent this so that it doesn't happen to you yeah how would okay yeah okay with rook g7 what? you prevented it because you offered me you offered me oh, to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, trade yeah. it it's it's uh for instance if you could get a position this i'm cheating here this would not happen but i just need to make sure um that i can get the rooks here so you would try to get that out of there okay um okay. sorry i need to cheat one more so that to give uh space to the king i just want to set up the position don't take these as move by move but if you have your opponent's rook on the seventh already, you would try to find a way in which you can try to chase them away or offer a trade so that they won't be uh, just camping there on the seventh rank because it's too powerful. Okay, perfect. Noted. I'll All never right. forget. You'll <laughs> Good. never have to tell me that again. <laughs> Excellent. Now we're going to go to another game of yours. This is a middle game position against okay. wishy venki i think when did you, you do all this preparation <laughs> i gotta be prepared i'm your coach unbelievable scenes honestly i'm sure that levy also prepares even if even if he wants to sabotage you levy, levy just goes and talks to mr david pacman and <laughs> says listen this is what finn's playing we're going to teach him how to play it badly and then we're going to sabotage him for our entertainment that's all levy does but i can tell <laughs> <laughs> Poor Levy. He's such a good coach. <laughs> I know you appreciate him. I know you appreciate him deep inside. Yeah, I know. Of course, of course. <laughs> so this game, you're playing it with the black pieces and we're going to be looking at the middle game. Did I win any of these games or are they all losses? Oh, you won. You won many of them. I I'm just okay. trying to okay. help you. You're just trying to improve it a lot. Yeah, yes, yeah. in general, in cases where you could have done something differently so okay. this is your this is your game um the last few moves just to catch up with the game you took this pawn on g3 you won a pawn that's that's good yeah. gets good stuff and with h6 you started chasing away this knight that's also a great move because the knight was annoying on g5 and now it's pushed back to h3 so h6 is also a really strong move and here you you pushed e5 um Tell me about that move and why why do you think it's an appealing move? <laughs> uh, why would I have done that? Um, why would I have pushed up on... I'm just trying to look and see if there's anything else that I... Um, I guess maybe my plan was eventually <clears throat> to be able to take the knight with the bishop on the c file. And with that pawn where it is, um, it's not going to happen. Uh, and that way, if I get there, his king's going to be completely exposed. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I think. Obviously, it's hard for me because I'm not very good at chess for me to remember back to what I was thinking in a game. Mm -hmm. um, but looking at it now, I would reckon that I was trying to make his king uh, open up and taking his pawn out of the center doesn't feel like the end of the world but then he's going to be attacking me twice with uh, his queen and his bishop and i'm only defending at once with the knight so like looking at it now um doesn't as in the pawn on uh, d5 will be getting attacked twice yes it's um, good that you realize what can be an issue with it and uh, even though in the game after the capture you did take back with the queen which is great because now you are also protecting the pawn um but i was still just gonna suggest that um don't the, do that. Uh, <laughs> this can become very complex because then he, then your opponent started chasing your queen. Um, the bishop gets cut off from the rest of your pieces. Um, one 
rule of thumb for positions like this is that before if I know, okay, before, before you before you continue because yeah. the knowledge is great but when you say positions like this like how do i identify a position like this like what are the like what like what is a position like this like what do you mean yeah um very good question and always ask questions if it's not clear what i'm referring yeah, yeah. to because um, all I see is a bunch of pieces on the board. Yes. You're going <laughs> so, to have to give me a little, a little bit more insight so I can recognize it. Yeah, let me try. Um, when you have a bunch of pieces on the board, but some of those bunch of pieces are not developed yet, you will okay. try to finish developing the rest of your pieces and then open up the position. So an issue okay. with, with uh, pawn breaks, this would be a pawn break because, well, it creates... Um, it offers a trade of pawns, which yeah. opens up the position somewhat. So the D file opens up, some of the diagonals open up. Um, the more you open up the position, the more uh, you can have a disadvantage if your pieces are undeveloped. It's true okay. that he's also not the fully developed. So basically, you both have your bishops on C1 and C8 and the rooks on A1 and A8. But just because he is is about the same in terms of the queen side development i would still suggest that in general you think of you think of um, middle games in a way that you you will want to open up the position when your pieces are ready for the position to be open can i ask one question about it yes which so obviously when you say develop to me the only piece that i haven't developed would be the bishop on the c file yes what, is that wrong um that bishop is undeveloped and the rook on oh, yeah, a eight. The... Okay, so yeah, okay, so all right. Yeah, I'm no, do still... ask your question. So if, no, if no, 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 wrong... yeah, no, I, I just wasn't. I, I didn't know. So obviously, I understand like how a bishop is developed and a knight is developed. But like when you say that the rook is not developed, is that because like I have to move it, or because it's not like onto an open file, or like what defines a rook being developed because they stay on that one a lot. Yeah, good good question for that because sometimes a rook can also be active where it stands. So it not it doesn't always okay. mean that you have to move it. Especially imagine if you were to trade. It's something. just on a terrible position. That that pawn is killing it. Nothing's happening. Okay. Yes. I, I do get it. Yeah. Okay. If you were to trade something on b five, then you suddenly would have mm -hmm. a semi open five for your rook. Then it would have something to do. But because you have your pawn on a six. It's not doing anything on a8. Uh, you could also say that the rook on f8 is not doing too much, but you have castled and and it can then support um, your king side, or you can move it to e8 or d8. So it's it's not uh, that strong on f8 as it is, but it's better than the a8 rook. Um, I'm gonna ask another question, and this yeah. is uh, I'm, it might get tedious because I'll just keep asking questions. No, do ask questions. I prefer the way, it. The way the way that I'm like developing my attack, it feels like I should be trying to. Go, I, I think it's the king's side of the board. Like basically, I want my uh, bishop on the c file to like continue attacking towards like the open squares to the left. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the correct way to put it. Yeah. But if I put it onto uh, d7, it's like it has no squares there. And if I put it onto b7, uh, the only way it's going to have like a lot of uh, of a diagonal is if I open up um, the pawn on d5 and then he's like then it's like his bishop's pointing directly at my king and that seems not great yeah uh, you're right that it's not so easy to find an active spot for this okay. bishop in this in in okay. this very moment but you you i think you summed it but up correctly still, that if you if you were to place it on b7 it's true that it's it's just blocked by your own pawn at the same time you were aiming to push e5 i know you mainly wanted it so that your bishop could at some point take the knight but e5 mm -hmm. in general could be an idea in the future once okay. you have developed your pieces so the move itself e5 is is not a bad idea it's simply that your position was not fully ready to okay. to open up the position with that pawn push so if you were to play bishop b7 and then the opponent your opponent has the same issue with their bishop it doesn't really have a good spot they they might yeah. play bishop d2 but it's not like <clears throat> it's a it's a powerful bishop there on d2 um yeah. and now let's let's think of this rook because you said uh, you weren't sure what do i mean with it so what do you think could be a better spot for that rook i mean i know that you're meant to go towards open files uh, in general but i don't really think i'm achieving a lot by being on this d file and maybe it's better to be on the d file and support that center mm -hmm. um, where I'm going to push potentially to e5 at some point. And then if he takes um, the pawn with his bishop, I can still take it with the knight. But then 
I don't know. It feels like having like more back for that pawn. It feels I don't know like a lot about this position, but it feels like that's an important part of the game. So maybe supporting it would be smart. But obviously the bishops there as well, so maybe it's overkill. Um, it's sometimes actually good to to overkill the uh, in terms okay. of protection because that means that some of your pieces can be then freed. You don't have them tied down to the defense of that pawn. And and also if you think of uh, the position at some point after e5 if your opponent takes then maybe in in the future you will be able to try to push the d-pawn and open up the d5 for your rook so it okay. could be it could it could be good for that too if you want to aim for e5 and later d4 but you're right you can okay. place it on c8 so with with the rooks on the back rank since we have two rooks um it's oftentimes a question where you want to go with each so let's think of both at the same time so give me one five for one and the other five for the other rook what would be your uh, ideal well, setup? If I, was, I guess i don't know see i like i don't mind the f uh uh excuse me the f rook where it is i call it the castle all right i know you guys okay. call it yeah the rook but it's a castle and it's a horsey all right but we'll i'll try it that's why i just pause because i have to think to say rook but um, the castle is fine and i have a horsey mode so i agree with you <laughs> I never put the rook on, uh, so I never put the f rook on the c file because then my a file rook is just not in a good spot. Very good. So if I was going to go towards the c file, I would definitely use the one on the a file. Um, mm -hmm. And then if I was if I was going to put it there and I was going to move the rook, I would put the f file on the d file. But I don't hate. Obviously, things are like pretty close up right now. But like once I move uh, my knight on f six, like that rook does like somewhat of a good job of supporting mm -hmm. that pawn if mm -hmm. i want to push it and it's like i don't hate it where it is now i'm not saying it's yeah. best because i don't know but i'm just saying like in game like i i don't know if i'd be in a rush to move it i think that was the perfect reasoning for why you would do this or that because i fully agree with you that the rook on a fate um has a potential future for when you move the knight away if you want to push that pawn or open up the position um, so rook to d8 and then the idea of pushing e5 as you did in the game makes perfect sense. I think this would be a great setup and a good plan. Okay. Let me know if you have more questions in general about this position. No, no, I, I think I'm good. I'm just, I definitely uh, don't really, under I never really understood when you were starting to do pawn breaks and yeah. understanding that I should be fully developed before I do it. Is there exceptions? I'm not asking for you to give me exceptions, but is there always exceptions? Because it feels like it's like a... But, or is this just like a because i like solid rules like i like when yeah. people tell me something's like don't ever do this yeah and i'm like that's um, great let me try to uh, let me try to set up something um because there are of course always exceptions and and also um let me let me just try to to place something on the board i don't know if, i'm just trying to make it up so that it, it will suit what we want to do um don't look at this move by move. I'm just gonna do this something. This looks like a great opening. Honestly, I think this is uh, what I should play. Do you like it? I'm not gonna tell Levy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell <laughs> Levy. <laughs> I won't tell Levy about it. I'm just gonna make some some bad moves too for for oh, looks good to me. black. A file. This this looks quality. <laughs> do you like it? Yeah, it's 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 aggressive. <laughs> um, so. This, this could be a position where if, if your opponent doesn't rush with their development, so white has already castled, black hasn't. Um, if your opponent is Am taking... I, sorry, to, sorry to cut across, but are, yeah. are, are, you, when you, are, we, are we white here? Yes, yeah, sorry, I should okay, have I'm said gonna... that. So we are looking at this from the white's perspective. Oh, I'm just going gonna, gonna to flip it because I, I don't have the... Oh yeah, I flipped it on my okay, end. Sorry, on. I should have told you to flip it. No, it's fine. It's all good. We're in. <laughs> I, okay yeah this, so, this this position's even better now this is this is what you I'm like playing. it more from this side yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay it's fast. i'm glad yeah. i'm glad <laughs> i just made some random moves but what i want to illustrate is that there will be occasions when you you have already castled and your mm -hmm. opponent is still not ready to castle so if your opponent's king is in the middle of the board you will try to catch them as soon as you can if you could open you up catch them do you mean, um, okay, so you mean start open. attacking okay. them so okay, sweet. if we could open up the e-file in positions like this and you would mm -hmm. be able to start attacking it, that that would be a really promising attack. 
uh, it's not it doesn't always lead to checkmate or win but in general yeah. as a rule of thumb if you have already castled and your opponent's king is in the middle of the board you want to try to open up the position as quickly as you can and that okay. means that here you will not uh, waste time so I would normally tell you to develop all your pieces, then open up the position. But yeah. um, if you now use time to develop your bishop, to then move the queen, to then bring the rooks, your opponent will castle in the meantime. Yeah. So okay. if your opponent's king is in the middle of the board, or, or vulnerable in any way, it also may be that they castle, but it's it's a, a weak castle pawn structure or such. So urgency is when, when the opponent's king is... Um, exposed in one way or the other okay. or if it's not exposed yet you want it exposed you want to open up the position as, as, as soon as you can because it's still on e8 yeah. so how could okay. we try to open up the position here not in one move but a plan what would be um, an idea i would bring my knight to d5 and mm -hmm. then you could offer a trade takes, if he takes my knight i take with the pawn yes um, mm -hmm. and then i can move my I can move my rook or my queen and it's check automatically. Yeah. But I, is it my move right now or is it his move? Because um, So I took back to illustrate your idea. Okay. And after 95, let's think of a follow up for white. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to grab material here. Would I scare you? Mm -hmm. um, no, because I can just put my queen or my rook and he can't take it. Like Very I can good. Just, yeah, yeah. Can you just... can, you can pin my knight. Yeah. So this is the issue with the king in the middle of the board, if you can open up the position. Um, can you tell me what white is threatening with? What would be a great move here for white if I make a really useless move for black? Um... What are we threatening? Yes, the Just question the is what, what is why threatening? Um, um can I, would, you I don't see... know. I can't check him like in this move anyway. So maybe I would put my bishop. See, I don't know how good it is, but I put my bishop to b5 maybe. And then that's pinned as well, but I don't know if that's any good. Mm -hmm. um, think of what you've been aiming for so far in terms of how to yeah, attack king. king. Yeah. But I can't. Um, oh, sorry. I'd push my pawn actually to f4, and then that means his knight can't move. Exactly. You can push f4, and the knight is pinned, so you are winning the knight because it's unable to jump away. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would do then. I'm a... Excellent. I'm just delaying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Excellent. And then that's it. Is that is that? And then we're happy out. Like yes, we are happy. Okay. <laughs> well done. But uh, yes, that's, that would be a situation when your opponent's king is in the middle of the board. You want to open up the position as quickly as possible, even if you don't have all of your pieces out. So one so one thing that I've definitely, I watched the video one time and I still don't, it's just where we were a second ago, where the... Oh, the, you are in the final position here. Just where we were supposed to push that pawn. Yeah. Like I, I, I got told like not to push that pawn a lot when I watched the video. And is it, is it just overkill? Like, because obviously I can see why we push it here, and I get it, and I understand why it's an exception. But I got told not to really touch that F three pawn. Is that is that in, like how like how do I know when I'm allowed to do it? Not. I can see why I do it here because I'm going to win a piece. But yeah. You have to be compensated with a piece. Um. So, I'm guessing that video was probably um showing some of the dangers of pushing that pawn because oftentimes you will castle kingside and that means that this f2 pawn is one of your bodyguards i like to call these the bodyguards those three pawns in front of the king are the okay. bodyguards and you want to keep them as close as possible to your king because that's the way they can protect you the most um if anything yep. you will push like maybe h3 or g3 to give some room to the king do you know yeah. positions when the back rank is vulnerable yeah yeah and... yeah, yeah. so okay. usually it's yeah. an h or g pawn that you would push um, because okay. if you push the F pawn that weakens the A7 G1 diagonal, in this mm -hmm. position, there's nothing going on there. But imagine if the black queen was on B6, then it's yeah. already pinning your knight on D4. Um, so okay. it's it depends on the position. Just make sure that before you push that pawn, you check if there's anything going on on that diagonal because it makes your king okay. a bit more exposed. All right, noted. 
But oh, it's I'm good that be, you I'm remember. Gonna be, I'm going to be like 2,000 <laughs> rated by the end of the day, Anna. You will be. <laughs> but now I'm worried about Hannah. I need to start coaching her. No, you don't need to coach her for a little while. She's fine. She'll be okay. <laughs> I want that back She only started her. playing yesterday. <laughs> I only started playing yesterday. Like, it's going to take a little... Like, I'm not that good, but it's it's going to take a little while. <laughs> Right, so I'm rooting for her, but I'm also rooting for you at Pokchan. So maybe I train you first you and then you I know, train her. <laughs> you can't, like, Anna, you're just going to have to accept that sometimes you're going to have to pick a side. Like, you can't just sit on the fence and pretend to be super nice all the time. Like, you're just going to have to be like, I hope that you lose. You have to spend thousands on a bag and I'm going to coach Anna and it's going to lead to your demise. And I don't care if you lose Pokchan because of it. You just need to have that. <laughs> that honesty because I like or else it's just I can't believe you if you're just like oh I want you and Hannah to do well like that, that can't work with the chess because either I'm losing the Chanel bag or I'm not well um then maybe we should <laughs> uh, call it a day and I'm gonna call Hannah <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no but um I'm I'm really happy to see that that she started practicing yeah, no, that's I, great. It, it's really cool that she's getting into chess too whether she will get the bag or not I'm rooting for her just she for the, the bag. So, so, <laughs> at some stage she'll get the bag <laughs> at some stage <laughs> so very good job with with trying to open up the position it will of course always depend on the position what way would be yeah. an attempt black didn't have to take on d5 so this is this was just an example to to try to aim for it sometimes you will not be able to execute it uh, but if you aim for it and your opponent is slow getting the king out of the center then yeah. it's likely that you can punish them for not uh, okay. castling um now in terms of your openings i think I'm not gonna go into openings, but I think <laughs> no, you play um... you play mainly d4 openings, uh, which can lead to more closed positions. So they're more closed positions. I was trying to play openings that yeah lead to like where we're likely to have. Basically, I was trying to play openings that would lead to stuff where there's going to be tactics available, and it'll be just whoever notices them more. That's what I was trying to do. So this is the complete way, wrong way to go about it. Um. Not necessarily. There can be that. There can be tactical models missed both in. I notice. I notice tactics. Openings. No matter what. No matter what way you go. I understand that. Yeah. They're going to open up in games between yeah. people who aren't that good for sure. But I thought this would like. Hmm. Is, is the queen's gambit the opening you're referring to? As when you say this. Um. Yes, I saw you playing. Uh the london system a few times and also okay, well, i definitely did i definitely didn't intend to play the london system at any point so <laughs> the, I, the thing about it is like when i'm on my phone i find it a lot harder and i was playing on my phone yesterday when we were coming back uh we were out and i was we were in the taxi for a little bit so i was playing that so maybe that's what these games were but mm -hmm. all right so yeah but i do i do play the d4 yeah pretty much that's totally fine because as you said the tactical motives can occur in in any opening okay. so as long as you're the opening is only important so that you you know what you're doing in the first few moves uh, you have yeah. a piece set up and you have a basic plan and then it's game on that's all yeah. i need from from you to know in the opening really to to be confident yeah. in the start um and then get into a middle game where your opponent will blunder first okay okay uh, hopefully i'm definitely gonna blunder first it's uh, i'm telling you i'm just i'm gonna crumble under the pressure to stream i can feel it already my palm my palms are sweating just thinking about it i don't get nervous for anything when it comes to poker or anything like that but i just know with chess like the pressure is just going to get to me i can feel it i'm going to collapse and it's going to it's going to be beautiful for a lot of people to see no doubt but there we go it's going to happen but anyway i'll try not to blunder i'll try not to let you down I don't I believe that you will crumble under pressure. I think oh, a poker no. player must be really good at uh, yeah, competing under like, tension and pressure. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Like, but I don't, I don't ever get nervous playing poker, like ever. So, no matter how much money I'm playing for or anything, like when it comes to poker, I just enjoy it. I, I'm having fun. I like, I don't, you know, because. I know what I'm doing. I'm like, if things don't go well, they don't go well. But in chess, if things go wrong, that's because you messed up. Like if you messed up, it's nothing to do with like variance. There's no luck. It's just like you got outwitted. There's yeah. nowhere to hide. Like it's all on you. Like in poker, you know, you can run bad. The variance can not be on your side. That's just not a thing in chess. And it's one on one. There's no one else involved. It's just one person versus one person. Anyway, I'll be fine. I'm not sweating. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. I'm doing the Ross from friends right now. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, you're right about all that but i'm sure you will deal with it well i'm sure you will there's no, still plenty okay. of I'm time sure you're coaching uh, you're also practicing uh, with puzzles you play from your phone so you're putting in the effort just keep keep being motivated and and get those I will. other I will. gamers 
Do you see a new board? Um, does it show up? Uh, oh wait, no, sorry, I didn't open it properly. You can't see it yet, I think. Um, I'm booming. I'm booming. I think some of the there are park chimps who have been training pretty consistently, and there are others who <laughs> who haven't had a single session yet. I think because of of their schedule or or they they are not yeah, that yeah. motivated. So don't worry, don't worry. If I want to win, I have no interest in any other position. Good. What's the highest rated? What's the right? Do you know the highest rated person? Everyone is below a thousand and fifty rating points, as far as I know. Okay. So like that's about the about same level. So that's okay. I was saying, okay. All right. I think Which it one? was on purpose that everyone is about a, I, below a thousand and fifty or a thousand and one hundred. You're playing with the black pieces, so we can flip the board. Yeah. Um, and this I'm, doesn't look good for me, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'm gonna go to an earlier stage of the game, this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're playing this with the black pieces. I, mm -hmm. I don't need you to recall the game or anything, but I'd like to ask okay. you in general, um, but what do you think of positions where the king's castle opposite flanks? <laughs> I don't know, I, I'll be perfectly honest. I've, I've spent zero time thinking about what yeah, I think about when the king castles on your side. I'm going to light on, but uh, I, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the um, the question about these positions, then, um, have you have you had many games where you would be in a situation like this, or it doesn't? I think they usually castle on the side. So on wait, so same. he's he's when you say the opposite side, do you mean like they cast on the queen side, or you mean the opposite side to my king? The opposite to your king. So it could be that they have the it on the king side, you have it on the queen side, or vice versa. Yeah, I think I think that's what happens in most games, though. So it happens to you frequently. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, we're gonna we're gonna learn about these positions a little more. Um, what would be your instinct, though, in terms of what do you need to play for in a position like this as black? I need to get my pieces onto the king side so I can attack them. Yeah, onto their their king side, right? So on, onto in, their king side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the queen side in in this case that you will try to attack their king. And mm -hmm. what do you think is the plan for them? The same. Uh, the same on the opposite flank, indeed. Yeah. So these positions are usually very sharp because both of you will be aiming straight forward to attack the opponent's king. This is the perk defense, by the way, and I, if, I have played that a lot, but I'm not going to play that in the thing. That's the one that I was practicing with Levy and uh, and Danny, but I'm not going to play this. And I know that this happens a lot when you play this move. <laughs> so you will I'm not play this you, at the event. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to play it. Now, I might play it sometimes in the earlier rounds if I get raided against lower raid people <laughs> so that I can't get exploited. Honestly, I'm, I'm just not letting it happen. But yeah, so this is this is what has happened a lot. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't know what move I'm on or whatever, or how I've got into this exact situation. But it doesn't look great for me, from what I can see. Um, it's it's normal. I think that I've seen this setup, uh, the pirates or kings Indian setup in your okay. games a couple of times. Um, I think you're playing them well. I was just curious in general if you know, um, the ideas. And yes, you said the right plan. You're gonna be at aiming for the white king. They will be attacking your king. And because you mm -hmm. you castled opposite flanks, these attacks can be very aggressive and very straightforward yeah. because you are able to start pushing the pawns where normally you wouldn't. So if the white king was on g1, you are not launching those pawns in, pawns in front of your king. Um, yeah. But because it's on the other side of the board, you can you can be very brutal and aggressive with how you handle okay. the attack. And, mm -hmm. and that also means that because both of you have these ideas, a very aggressive attack, speed matters a lot. So the, okay. the person that arrives faster with their attack will usually be the one that wins. Because okay. both of you are aiming for the king, if that makes yeah. sense. So a yeah. lot of these positions will also um, allow that you sacrifice a pawn or two to speed up your attack. The mater material will not matter that much, especially if it when it comes to pawns. Okay. The, what matters the most is that it's fast, what you're doing. Okay. So um, in a position like this, uh, let let me um, ask you, what do you think would be a way for black to to try to attack on the queen side? First of all, let's look at that. Um, I would go a6, then b5. Yeah, a6, b5 would be 
away to push the B pawn. And after you have it on B5, you can push it further to B4 to trade yeah. it for the A pawn, open up the B file. Very good. So that would be one way if we want to go for a queen side attack. And another thing you can do um, when it comes to flank attacks is to try to hit back also in the center. So it's either both players playing only on the flanks, focusing on the flanks, or you can try to hit in the center because obviously the center of the board is still the most important part. So if you can if you can get through in the center, you are also achieving something because you, you will disrupt the opponent's okay. pieces, you I'll will attack E5, something. Then. E5 is another option, very good. Because that, that puts pressure on the d4 pawn immediately. So you're attacking it with yeah. three of your pieces. And white has to react to this move. If white takes on e5, how would you take back? Uh, I'll take with the bishop. You can take with the bishop. And no, that attacks... take with the bishop. No, that's fine. There there are plenty of options here. You're, <laughs> you're reading your, me too your well. Voice, your, vo your voice went up about four octaves there. It's <laughs> definitely not fine. That's okay, yeah, that's okay if you want to be <laughs> shit at this game. Uh, uh, I oh no, it's difficult to train a poker it player. Atta <laughs> it, it, it attacks his queen straight away, so I take the knight. Yes, or am I which, wrong again? which knight? Again, <laughs> no. Uh, which knight? I would take it with... Uh, I would take it with the one that you just highlighted, the first one. Oh, I was going to highlight yeah. both, but I'm too slow. <laughs> C, C, C6 I would take it with because I don't know if this is right, but then he's not going to end up having a pin on my queen. Um, uh-huh. You are a little worried about the D5. Yeah, so I would, I, would, I would take it with the... The problem is I feel like the knight on C6 is like more positioned to like help the attack yep. um, on the king side or whatever side, basically, the CBA files. Mm -hmm. um, so if I take that back into the center, like it feels like I'm going to have to go that way, then bring it back over. But I can take that pawn and then jump into C4, which threatens the bishop. But again, like that's threatening towards the center. But I don't know. I, I don't really have like a strong preference. But if, if I had a guess, I would say that I would have went to C5. But I also feel like I'm contradicting myself because it's closer to the side I want to attack on. Mm -hmm. I think uh, your reasoning makes perfect sense that that even though um, you you would you would want to keep the c6 knight here, but you are slightly worried about the d file if you move the knight away and and if there will be any issues toward your king. So that's it's good to have those tactical elements in mind so that there could be a potential pin because of the white mm -hmm. rook being on d1 and your queen on d8. Um, you just need to double check if there's anything going on on the d file or not before you would make a move like knight takes knight so which, which takes. one's best though i don't know <laughs> you do know you definitely do know grandmaster anna doesn't know get out of here tell me which one's better right now tell me I, it was the last one that i picked we can make all of them work i think okay. <laughs> almost which all one of them would you do, though? so let's look at the one that you mentioned first i know it was my mm, i was expecting I, I, I a knight I, move I, I Oh, yeah, I do feel like now that I look, I just, the, re the reason I wanted to do this was because now if I get, if I take his uh, knight, obviously I'm sacrificing like that diagonal, but it just means that his pawn structure is destroyed. Yeah. And then like his king's very open, but I don't really have anything that can do anything about that right now. Like my queen, my, and my two uh, uh, rooks are kind of not very active. And so like, if, if I open it up now, there's not a whole lot I can do about it anyway. But it, it makes a lot of sense that you want to take on c3 to damage the pawn structure of white yeah. in front of their king. So I think bishop takes c5 makes a lot of sense, even if it's not the move I expected. It, it may be still a really good one. So if white wants to defend it, they will have to either move the knight away to prevent that um, mm -hmm. or try to protect it. But if they, if they make a move like, let's say, bishop to h6 to attack your rook, how would you react to, to that? I just bring my rook onto the e-file. Yeah, you can move the rook away. I was curious if you would consider coming back with the bishop to g7. What do you think of moves like that? You didn't. Um, Good. I, well, the thing, the, the, re the reason that I wouldn't do it um, is because I think that my diagonal with the bishop is a lot stronger than his. And like, he can't really cause that many threats yet. Obviously, like his queen's like staring down at my king as well. So it, it potentially has some issues, but... I don't know. It feels like my bishop's stronger than his bishop, even though he's like right in the danger zone. Very so good. I could be completely wrong. 
No, excellent. Uh, excellent. Do you like, I like, did you see, I got a Zugs Wong uh, emote in my thing, and it's honestly the coolest word I've ever heard, because I don't know how much you know about my stream, probably not much, but like the brand is ATV, which means like addicted to bluffing. And like people I didn't know that's why it's a, well, the letters, that, that's what it stands for. Yeah. So people, people, I break people's hearts all the time. So watch me stream for like seven, eight hours. They'll get invested in like a deep run and then I'll bluff off all my chips. But now I can just say Zugs won. Like I had no choice. It was just, <laughs> that's, that's what happened. These, these things happen in life and sometimes you just got to roll with it. So it, it, obviously I know by definition, I did have a choice and it doesn't actually work, but it, it works for me. It's like you go to the kitchen at night and there's a nice chocolate bar and it's like 2 a.m. And it's like, you shouldn't take it, but Zugs won. Like, what was I supposed to do? Exactly. You know? so Definitely. My new favorite word. <laughs> Talk to one. I like it. Also for the kitchen situation. It happens to me all the time. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> I need to Absolutely. see that emote, but definitely amazing <laughs> that, that you're using it also in poker context. Yeah. It's great that you all compared right, so the bishops. I, I was going to praise you on that because whenever it comes to trades, um, I think at the, uh, at the beginner level, what also is not natural is to, to actually compare uh, okay. which piece is more valuable. And, and it's so important because if you're trading off a piece that's, that is doing more, that is that has more uh, potential, more power, then, then you're losing, not in points, like in material wise, it will still be the yeah, same yeah. position, but you're losing some of your positional advantage. Okay. So, but it is, so is, it, is it as like, is his bishop as unthreatening as I feel like it is? Because I feel like he can't do a whole lot, or, or, or should I be a little bit more concerned about it than I am? Because obviously he can check me with it, and his queen at this moment in time can't do anything, because like if he takes the pawn, Obviously, just taking my king. If he goes to f6, I take him with my bishop. So, like, if it does, it doesn't feel that threatening. But I don't know if that's just like me mm -hmm. being a little bit, you know, oversight and not too concerned when I sh there should be more alarm bells going. I'm not scared of that bishop. Should I be scared of that bishop, Anna? That's what I'm asking. I'm glad you're not scared. Um, but it's also okay. good that you you question whether you should be or not because it's true that when you have a pawn structure like this, so you have your pawns on light squares, it means that you have weakened the dark squares because you can yeah. see that h6 g7 f6 that those are more vulnerable because of the pawns as you place the pawns on light squares so this position you're right that white cannot do anything right now because you're covering so many of those squares so the queen is not coming in on f6 cannot be brought onto the mm -hmm. long diagonal you're fine here um what we should be careful about is that the piece that makes everything um be held together which one of your pieces do you think is now crucial in the defense? The bishop, and I'm talking about sacrificing that for the knight. Yes. <laughs> so don't 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 break up his pawn structure just yet. Exactly. So sometimes uh, when you free and cut to your bishop, um, make sure that before you give up that piece, you consider the consequences. Because if you if you were to trade your dark squared bishop, then you can have serious issues on okay. the dark squares. So a mm -hmm. position, obviously, you wouldn't play that, but I'm just going to play at this move. And here, of course, we would only want to take if it's taken back with a pawn, but this, this of course, would be already starting to be yeah, a, still, a that's, nightmare. That's all, that's all sorts of trouble, that is. Yeah, like you, you still may be able to survive, especially if you can offer a queen trade. Um, when, when your king so, is so under attack... So should I offer a queen trade there? Because I would have just pushed my pawn. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about this, um, but... It's, it's good that you are asking me now. So okay. Question okay. back. Um, in general, because I know you like okay, rules, <laughs> yeah, when your king is under are... attack... Yeah, I've you... been told this before. Yes, I, 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 you I, know I lied it. to you. I've been told this rule <laughs> and I forgot it. And I, I, I promised Ladder Levy or I promised Danny that I wouldn't forget it. And I did. So there you go. I'm a liar. But anyway. You'll not forget it again because it's logical. So think of the queen as the most powerful attacking piece. If you're mm -hmm. attacking, you want the queen in your mating attack because that's the most powerful piece. Yeah. And the same goes for defense. If you don't want to get mated, you should try to trade the opponent's queen so that it doesn't get a chance to get close to your king. I think it's yeah. um, you will if you just think of the reason instead of just remembering the rule. Like the queen is so powerful, I don't want it around my king. Trade it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. So just don't get rid of the bishop for now. Because I definitely probably still would have got rid of it in-game <laughs> if you don't ask me that question. 
like this is still game on but in general um things are becoming a little shaky if you give it up and, and did i get rid of it in game is that what i did um no you didn't play e5 but i'm so happy you found it that's the best move in that position <laughs> Okay. So we're in this starting position, I brought this position up to ask you in general about when you cast the opposite flanks, if you know about the plans. And also okay. in the game you played f5. And I would like you to think why I wanted to talk about this move and then what happened in the game. I can show you e takes, g takes, um, g takes. Can you Can you describe what has happened to the position? What has changed? My king is fucked. <laughs> so I have no defense really, and it's it's all sorts of trouble for me. Yes. But that's a technical <laughs> term, by the way. Sorry, I know you guys don't swear so much on the chess tunnels, but you live with an Irish people, like you must be used to a few curse words from time to time. Yeah, it's not it's not looking so hot for my king right now. Things are powering down and there's not a whole lot I can do about it right now. Like I can't touch that pawn. Um if I move my bishop, it's like it's it's all sorts of dicey. Uh, my queen's trapped. Uh, I can't really do a whole lot. Uh, things are not looking so rosy right now. Yeah, uh, very well summed up. You and... can just say it's terrible. <laughs> like, you don't need to be so polite. You can just be like, you've really ruined your chances of winning. And if you do this in Pog Champs, you're going to get embarrassed. <laughs> you're going to get embarrassed, Fintan and Pog Champs, but you could yeah, still turn the know. tables. Like It's not dead yeah. lost, but you have just helped your opponent. So let's just rewind. Yeah. I hear Ludwig saying though in the promo video you should hang a bishop from time to time so like don't worry I'm sure I'll make it exciting in that sense I'll throw for throw content <laughs> yeah exactly nobody nobody wants one person just come in and stomp the field so I, 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 you know it will be fine but anyway yeah don't do this <laughs> so what should I have done here again what was the best move that I should have done um you've you've just found e5 and we were analyzing this oh yeah okay yeah, so yeah. to hit in the yeah, center yeah. but on yeah, yeah. on the right spot um if white pushes d5 because we were looking at this mm -hmm. trade a little bit if white pushes the pawn where would you place the knight um i would go i know you're not meant to go on the side but i, I would go to a5 with the intention of going to c4 uh-huh okay um obviously i can bring it back as well into e7 but then i feel like i'm just closing off my queen again um so yeah i, I would go to the side and then jump back into the center but that's mm -hmm. pretty slow when you said this is about the speed of getting your pieces up to their king um so maybe it's too slow can you make it to c4 with your knight oh uh, no i can't because he's attacking it twice oh wait hold on no c4 so yeah, why not? is going to oh no he's got his bishop all right yeah there you go there's a blunder for you okay you yeah, know I, I gotta just come back to e7 i guess Yes, unfortunately, oh, no. knight a5, um, then your knight is trapped. It doesn't have any squares to go to. And if white is brave enough, they would be able to push the b-pawn and challenge that knight. Now, this this is a bit counterintuitive because they're opening up the position where their yeah, king is. Yeah, they're going to get a piece. Where they're getting the knight indeed. So um, you, you would still have practical chances if you manage to get the queen out and start attacking. So because of the flank attacks and, and their king being yeah. now more exposed, you still have practical chances here. I'm definitely not going to find that move if I'm sacrificing <laughs> my, my knight the way I did. 0% chance. But you you okay. could drop it back to e7. Or another move that I'd like you to think of is what if the knight jumps to d4? I'm going to lose a pawn. Oh, am I not going to lose a pawn? No, I'm not because of my bishop. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I can go in there, it attacks his queen, he takes with the bishop, I take with the pawn, and then he can't take with his rook because I will take with my bishop, which mm -hmm. means that he's got to react with his knight, or else he loses it. So, yeah, I should have went in there on it. That's the play, that's the pro move, right? Good you better job. not be setting me up to say all this, and then it's the wrong move again. <laughs> no, it's the right one. It's the right one. Okay. For all that you mentioned, very okay. good. Uh, the pawn cannot be taken, the knight has to go away. And you've just you've just traded their dark squared bishop, so that gives extra power to your dark squared bishop, because now you're the only player that has a bishop on those squares, so it, it cannot be challenged by the opponent's yeah. remaining bishop. Okay. So do you want me to try and guess where I have to go now? <laughs> if you want to. 
I it's would, a complex position, and White is trying to take your pawn. I would, would you be I would scared? Push the, I would push the C pawn to C5, and then I'd bring my queen out. Excellent. C5 protects the pawn, and you want to bring the queen. Very good job. Um, oh, what happens do if I want to go? I would, I would, I would have went to. Uh, oh, B6, B6 too. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just okay. trying to show the direction, but you're right, b6 okay. or a5, uh, depending on the position. Um, what happens if white takes this pawn? You do know this capture, I believe. Oh, the Empasson. Yes, good. Oh, damn, I hate that move. It shouldn't exist on <laughs> it. I honestly forget about it every single time. <laughs> every single time. Um, I forgot about it there. I think I think you're going to need to get in contact with someone. And you're going to have to rewrite the rules. And I'm going to have to get rid of it because it's impossible to notice. Like, who decided that you can just jump past the palm? Like, what do you know what year chess was invented? Uh, this was invented, um, this was the last rule to be added, and it, it was and just was a that? hundred or two hundred years ago. My, my chess history is reckon, terrible, but <laughs> okay. But they, they, I think, like, around that time, a lot of people were experimenting with mushrooms, and they probably thought this was a good idea to be able to transport through thin air. But I'm telling you right now, it is the worst move, and it shouldn't exist. It should not exist. So I'm just going to say, if if anyone puts their pawns there against me and Pog Champs, I think gentlemen's agreement. We don't end up on each other. We just let them be. It's a fair trade for both people. You can't just be jumping diagonally through the air without taking anything. That's not okay. <laughs> Completely unacceptable behavior. I actually think it's extremely rude. And I'd want to speak to a manager if anyone does it to me and Pog Champs. Like I'll go full Karen on people. I will. <laughs> I I like your anyway, so we don't, <laughs> passion. We don't want to do want to We don't want to do, do, do. Does this mean this plays out because we're going to lose the pawn now because he's going to take with the knight if we take with the bishop he takes with the yes rook. because of ampersand it it is bound to be lost because once you take back on c6 you then... must have some high up contacts in the chess world that could maybe <laughs> suggest that we get rid of it you must have somebody you can talk to. I may know a people, or um, I may know a person or two, um, but uh, yeah, I'm afraid that um, chance, um, so. um is too dear to the chess community. Now, actually, I don't uh, think okay. anybody likes it. It's just in, okay. there would be cases in pawn and games where no, you can know, you can know, just know, pass know, by. The... I'm not, don't worry, don't worry, Anna. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start marching the streets <laughs> to get the Ampasson cancelled. There's enough going on in 2020. That can't be our main issue. That can't be the hill we're going to die on. So it's fine. <laughs> we're just not going to move where I thought we were going to move. But because of the ampersand and you taking back on c6, even though white is winning this pawn, I'd like you to compare mm -hmm. what happened in the position because of this trade. So this is how the position was. Uh -huh. And we traded on uh, c6. It opened up, this, like not the center, but it opened up me being able to attack his king a lot easier. Uh-huh. Opened up the b file. So that can be so used. Where are we right now? This is where we're at right now. This situation. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm okay. just highlighting the wrong things. <laughs> no, it's all good. I would. I would. Uh, do you want me to ask what I do, or do you want me to ask about the situation, like what I've noticed? What you noticed? Um. I, I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I feel like these questions, like they're not trick questions, but I just don't know exactly what kind of answer I'm supposed to be giving. So I don't know where I need to go. Anything um, that that catches your attention, just for your chest. Attention. Well, there's two left pawns on the board. Yes, good. Yeah, good stars. Good <laughs> um, I feel it, it has opened up the diagonal for me a lot more, even though it's knights in the way right now, um, because I can just push my pawn on the C, on the C five, and then bring my queen over and not threaten mate, but like threaten an awful lot of pain for him. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's what I noticed. Other than that, Anna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Like you've got two ideas out of me. And that's like the best I can offer. So I think that's that's as far as I'm gonna go in terms of what I've noticed. That was perfect. You've noticed okay. everything that had to be addressed, and because of those okay. pawns disappearing from the board, the position is opening up, and it's opening up where you want it to open up. So the B file, okay. there used to be, you used to have a pawn on B7. And because mm -hmm. of trading and taking back with the B pawn, that is now a semi-open so file. Do we want to? Do we want to be letting this guy ampersand me? Is that what you're saying? You yes. got to let him. Ampersand so is great. Ampersand is okay. great. So maybe I don't know if we're going to be on chat, but I think a lot of people at my level will forget about the ampersand. So 
maybe if we could just have like uh, in-game in-game voice, like you know, three times per game, I can remind my opponent that he's able to, or her that they're able to jump by me, just in case they forget. Yes. So maybe we should maybe we should have in-game chats. I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know how the chess works, but it, I think it would be fun if we were going back and forth. I think that psychological warfare is somewhere where I could maybe start to like win against those at a higher level because Americans are too polite. And if, in fairness, most of the chess community is too polite. So I'll just be the villain and I'll just like get inside their heads and I'll be like, oh, don't forget you can on for song because, you know, nice Irish guy helping them out. And the next thing you know, boom, open files, threat, game over, Pog Champs 2 champion, Fint and Hand, easy. <laughs> I would love to see an addition like that. I think we did have some matches. Um, there was one between two grandmasters, I believe, Simon Williamson and Ben Feingold. They do have a bit of a trash talking going on, or they had um, back then. Okay. So there was a match uh, organized where they, I think they were able to talk to each other during the game. But uh, okay. we could okay. we could suggest something like this for pop, future pop champs. <laughs> Anyway, and you would tell so, your opponent to, that uh, I'm I just, 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 a, just, a, just a gentle reminder. Anyway, I like so, it. Yeah. I like it. Okay. So you said pushing the pawn would chase that knight away. And I'm going to ask you if I were to move that knight, let's say here, to to think that mm -hmm. I'm going to win your queen, or at least I'm threatening the queen, what would be a good response here? So do you think uh, the, the pawn push is good before moving the queen to the b-file? Like, do you think... So obviously like one move before I moved the pawn. Um, you can so... also move the queen, you are right, that's another strong move, maybe even stronger. I thought you wanted to push c5. Would you would you prefer one or the other? No, I don't I don't know. I, I, well, uh I don't know. Um I would the, the reason I'd like to go here where you're uh highlighting is because then I can uh just take his knight if he doesn't yeah. move it. It's probably yeah. even stronger because um you are attacking the knight and you're also putting pressure on the b2 pawn. So yeah. if I were to move the knight, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I would prefer to go here, Anna. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So for the price of yeah. a pawn, you have opened up the queen side faster than what they could do mm -hmm. on the king side against your king. Mm -hmm. And you also got rid of their bishop. You have now a really powerful bishop on the long diagonal. Um, immediate threats. White will have to try to find a way to protect the knight it's it's already quite a difficult situation for white even though they are a pawn up yeah okay excellent so this is much better than than f5 right because f5 helps a little bit better yeah it seems, <laughs> seems a little bit better honestly i don't know like i feel uh, in the perk uh sometimes you do so like, like obviously this is uh from one lesson but i feel like in the perk sometimes you do push this now obviously for me to notice like you know the small little nuance and the, like the slight different changes in positions like yeah. even though you've helped me a lot here and like it's like honestly like it's been a great lesson but for me to like remember exactly what you've told and like identify like it's not going to just take one lesson or just like you know a few hours playing like it's yeah it's going to take a lot but i feel like there is a position in the perk where you bring your knife back into the seven so that you can then push that pawn and then bring your knight back in so i i would imagine that's what was going in my head um yeah and then i proceeded to panic and uh, realized that i'd absolutely misidentified the situation misapplied the knowledge um but i would imagine that's what was going on in my head um that makes a lot of sense because we apply the patterns we know so you remember the pattern yeah. from this type of uh, structure and mm -hmm. you applied it here but i think one thing that can help you next time to not make a move like this because obviously i'm not teaching you this to remember this move by move i want you to remember the ideas, yeah, yeah, the and the ideas so yeah. uh, the patterns and ideas indeed and here what we need to remember is that because speed matters so much in flank attack so you will be rushing on the queen side they will be rushing on the king side you just try to kill the opponent's king as quickly as possible and both yeah. of you are doing the same on the opposite flank um you yeah. are speeding up their attack with a move like this because you are helping mm -hmm. them open up the position on the flank where they are to attack yeah so, so I, I must have lost this game did i um i'm afraid you did lose the game yeah, yeah. i did lose this one it, I, honestly i, I would have i'm not surprised <laughs> It you saved a couple of others cover. though like some of the other games i was really impressed because uh there were a few where you would lose material in the middle game and then even if you're a piece down or a rook down you managed to to swindle your way back into the game yeah okay we'll take that but i probably would be better just not giving the pieces away <laughs> if if i had a choice but you know 
beggars can't be choosers. Gotta do what you gotta do. I was drunk yesterday when I was playing as well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give oh, myself a little bit of credit. I don't know if I'm looking at those games or not. <laughs> I don't know. We played we played about like ten games in chess today, and they were all last night when because H started playing chess, so we were just like playing together. Um, <laughs> And we were both a bit drunk, but yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And I feel like I have uh I've absorbed some of the knowledge, I hope. As long as the guy remembers the en passant and he doesn't forget. <laughs> that's the that's the main issue here. I've gone from being the biggest vocal voice against the en passant in the poker slash chess community to being a big believer and supporter and so much so that I'm gonna have to maybe will they be able to see my camera? Maybe I can just get like a little t shirt that says don't forget the en passant yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. t-shirt so. reference always helps yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. you right. could write it also on your forehead as well with a sharpie that's another option i got too much got too much hair <laughs> away, but we'll see maybe i'll get my hair cut just for the just for this <laughs> event okay <I> mean, <laughs> Did you see when Alex and the t-shirt reference and, and all this like reminded me of did you see when Alex was on the the Austin show and one of the oh. the contestants just to because <laughs> every round she had to get rid of one of the contestants obviously okay. so this is a dating show and they should try to convince her yeah. why why they should stay and uh, one of the participants I don't remember the name the streamer's name but it was like down to the last three or four people and and so Alex was like so convince me why why do i need to keep you in the contest and he just starts taking his t-shirt off and he is not one of the most athletic people that you will meet so you are wondering <laughs> what is he doing exactly yeah, but yeah. he had on his chest written alex with a sharpie <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just alex that was it he yeah, just he Alex. just took off his like, T-shirt. Uh, it was it's Alex's just... name with gigantic letters written on his chest with a sharpie. If you were a single lady, would that be the kind of thing that would have won your heart over on a dating show, Anna? Uh, I think that's straight to to a marriage. <laughs> it's basically it's just full commitment. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of commitment, but uh, fair play to him. Did, he, did Alexander pick him in the end? Um, no, <laughs> unfortunately, oh, okay. but he tried. Cold, cold hearted, Alexander. Cold hearted. <laughs> <laughs> um, if your opponent doesn't notice the t-shirt reference, you will still be happy because in that case, your pawn is protecting oh, yeah, the yeah. default pawn. They only, one, they, they, only, they only have one move to do it, right? They have to do it the first opportunity they get, or is that wrong? Exactly. So Ampassant can only be yeah. done straight away. If white doesn't take here, um, the computer will not even allow it. So let's say we move one move each, whatever move, yeah, yeah. and now it's not it's not an option anymore. Do you see that I'm trying to pull the, the pawn there? Does it show? Uh, I can see that you've highlighted the square and I can see the arrow, um, but I can't yeah, if, see the If you movement. try to move the, the mouse there, it will not let you. Okay. I trust you. I, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> think I'm going to lie, but the fact that you're trying to convince me so hard makes me feel like I should be doubting you and not taking your good words so much. But anyway, it's no problem. Make sure they don't pass on. Um, I don't, I, obviously, I'm happy because like, I'm not doing it, but like, if you said we're going to do about 90 minutes, so like if you're, if you're, if you're done, I think I learned some stuff. I don't know. Like, Whenever I don't want you want to it. finish, I am. I am. I'm gonna teach you as long as you want me to teach. As you. long as I want, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do a 24 hour stream right now. Have you ever okay. done a 24 hour stream? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. No. You don't. What's what's? How long do you stream for any stream? Um, from three to five, six hours. That that would okay. be. Okay. So four times so 24 hour stream might break you. Um... Okay. Let's 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 right, let's do one more position and then I'll let you go because I am enjoying it a lot and I feel like uh, I I have to say just because I know he's trying to screw me over now that way better coach than Levy. <laughs> I I, I feel like it, the chess queen you're gonna wrap me out. I am I am joking. I'm looking for I'm doing the lesson with Levy tomorrow actually, um, so hopefully I can bring some of this knowledge in and impress him. Yes, hopefully, hopefully. Let me show you then one final one. Um, I'm going to try to open the right one. I still have a couple of positions um, safe, so whenever you want to have another session, I already have enough uh, material for that I, too. I, that's, that'd be amazing. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna be playing every day between now, I think, I believe Pogchamp starts on the 18th. Um, uh, t 21st? Is... 21st? Okay, excuse me. So I have two weeks. Um, I'm not, like, I've, I'm not going to be, like, streaming too much poker this month, so anytime that you're free um and obviously being on an eu friendly schedule like makes it a lot easier um, yeah any day except for saturday it's the only day because people are streaming on my channel every saturday this month yeah um, oh that's awesome so 
yeah any day any day you can do add it pencil me in and tell me um and we'll definitely do it again next week but come on let's let's do one more for now and sure. uh, then i'm gonna play a couple of games obviously you don't have time around for them i'll see if because i have to get to a test and rated by tomorrow i owe 100 and 1600 rated in puzzles so i'm gonna have to do that right now and it, okay for I'm the sure, puzzles sure... <laughs> Mm -hmm. For the puzzles, I'm going to help you a bit more with visualization because I thought that was okay. another issue in some of your games. Um, puzzles okay. will help you in general, but I just wanted uh, to help you with how your thinking might be. There are a few tricks you can use for okay. those positions. Perfect. Let me just open this one. So you have to do that puzzle rush challenge or the rating no, no, challenge no, for a puzzle yeah. until tomorrow at a certain time or what's the what's the limit? No, Friday. But once Friday. I uh, I'm doing like a stream tomorrow evening uh, with another guy where it involves drinking and playing poker. So like if I'm not if I haven't got my last time with Levy, I believe is at eleven AM his time, I believe. So like if I haven't got it done by like six o'clock tomorrow, it's uh, a zero percent chance. I hope you'll get to do it. I hope you'll get to do it. I'm I rooting do, for I you. Do, and I'm also rooting for the subscriber, that. by the way, because like, it's such a cool thing. <laughs> no, but it's good that you're motivated. Any any kind of motivation helps. A Chanel bag or maybe a bit of cash. <laughs> so this position, you play this game with the black pieces. And after knight to d4, you played an interesting move. I'm going to okay, say so it, it was a very, a very, very polite, <laughs> polite way of saying you made a terrible move. You do this, you're going to lose. Please try better. You can, you just it, bad. You, you can say you can criticize someone. You're capable. You played a um, not optimal <laughs> move. <laughs> OK, well, you told me earlier on I was better than the bot. So I'll decide where did I go? Where did I move? You moved your knight to D7, which is a developing move. You tell me what's the issue with this move. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, what is the issue with this move? I have no idea. I don't know. I like, I don't know. Sure. It's developing. It's, uh, I still have some other squares you can go to. I've literally, uh, is it that it's blocking off my bishop? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I have no idea. No, honestly, you started thinking about um, the right way uh, to see this. Also, before you make a move, every move has pros and cons. So before you make a move yeah. like knight to d7, I'll I'll want you to visualize where that piece is landing and what changes in the position. And you did say, yes, you're developing your knight. It's blocking mm -hmm. the bishop. It also somewhat mm -hmm. blocks the queen. So those, you could say, once the knight is on d7, it does improve the knight, but it, mm -hmm. it does block the bishop and the queen. Sometimes it will be an issue, other times not. In what way does it block the queen? Um, I, I can just understand where it blocks the, the bishop, but the queen, the queen's not really doing much in terms of going straight forward right now. Uh, you are right. It would only be an issue if uh, let me let me say let me modify the position. So if the position okay. was like this, and then mm -hmm. you are thinking of a move like knight to d seven. So you once again would say. I'm activating yeah. my knight. No, it's no, a developing that move. That would be blundering the blundering the bishop, though. I get that. Yeah. So it caused the connection between the the bishop and okay. the queen. Um, mm -hmm. So whenever you make a move, I'd I'd like you to try to be um, systematic about analyzing what changes in the position, because okay. it can be very helpful for not making blunders. Okay. So by placing the knight on d7, it, the pros are mm -hmm. you are developing the knight. It then that controls d squares, so that's more active than before. Um, but it does block the c8 bishop and to some extent the queen. The d6 bishop in this game is not hanging, so that's okay. It's okay if it blocks yeah. the queen because that's not a that's not an attacked piece. But what about the bishop? Does it matter that your knight is covering the diagonal of the bishop? Um. I would have thought like not yet because I was planning on castling and then moving the knight again like pretty soon but I guess um that's not okay like I was I was probably gonna bring my knight that's on f6 into um e4 or else go the other way and move the knight 
into C5 and then into, I don't know if I've done this obviously, but the mm -hmm. plan was to get like one of the knights into that square in the middle of the board that's protected by the two pawns. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, you're just like, yeah, yeah, just do it now. No, just but honestly, it, those, <laughs> those knight maneuvers make a lot of sense. And um, normally you wouldn't be in any trouble just by blocking the bishop. Mm -hmm. Normally you would be just fine and later you activate the bishop. So the, the mm -hmm. problem is not that the bishop cannot be developed in the next few moves. It's a different issue here. Uh, take a oh. look at the rest of the board, all your pieces yeah. and also your I, opponents. F6, you can check me with his queen. I don't know how terrible that is that yet, but it's probably not ideal. Um... If I don't know, I don't know what else that there is. I mean, if he moves his knight, he's now attacking. If he moves his knight on d4, he's like attacking my knight where it is currently. So you're uh, saying after knight to d7, white moving where exactly? No, I'm just trying to look. At, I'm not saying anything in particular. I'm just the only things that I can see he can do right now are if I move my knight on f6. At any point in the near future, he can check me with his queen on h5. Uh huh. Good. And, and then if he moves his knight, so like whatever way I protect that, or whatever. If he moves his, if I if I protect that by pushing the g6 pawn, and then he attacks my queen or whatever with the with his knight that is on d4, it opens up a diagonal for his bishop to attack my castle. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So that is that the issue? Is that um or that would be something way more simple come on just yeah. like I, I you just have to go <laughs> off on a rant or a tangent and you could just be like yeah um actually no you just you're talking about the wrong piece completely um but you have said a lot of important things what happens if the other knight is moved you need to, to look mm -hmm. after uh, this check on h5 if you open up the long diagonal you can be in trouble because of the b2 bishop that all makes sense but it's simpler mm -hmm. what's happening here you are right so knight to d7 has an immediate issue. Take a look at your immediate opponent's issue. pieces. And what can immediate they do? Issue. They can... I mean, they can... I'm, I'm less protecting with my pawn on c6, but like it's protected by the pawn on b7. Yeah, so that pawn is fine. Do? What can they immediately do? I have no idea. I, I can't see it. Because I can't see that it undefends anything. So you were talking but about the C6 point. Take a look at all of your pieces. All of my pieces. <laughs> okay. I am looking at all of my pieces. I just don't know what I'm looking for. Is there anything else that might be in trouble? Anything else that might be hanging? That might be hanging. If if I move the the knight to if D7. I move the knight, yeah. If I move the knight, does he have to do it with two moves, or is it like instantly, like it's instantly hanging? Instantly, but because instantly of your hanging. move, so it's not hanging at the moment. It's not hanging at the moment, eh? Let me get rid of that. I don't know. Uh, I just don't know. And I feel like it's simple and I'm going to feel dumb. It's but okay. We know. all have blind spots. It it must be a blind spot because in the game, you play that move, your opponent didn't realize it, and then he played something else, and then you played something else, which still allowed that move. So it must be, it could be a blind spot. It happens to the best of players too. It happens yeah. to the top chess players that there's a blind spot and they are not seeing that square. I just don't see it on it. I just don't see it. Which piece is the most active piece of uh, your opponent? So the only one that that's close to to causing bishop. you damage. Sorry, not bishop. Sorry, knight on d four. Yeah. Uh, what is that knight targeting? There is a pawn, but I can't take it. There is a pawn, but I can't take it. There is a threat on my bishop, but it gets taken. Are you looking at the position after knight d7? Oh, you can. Oh, you know, sorry, it blocks the pawn. Okay, okay, I see the pawn on uh, e6. 
Yes. So I was looking at it right now, and obviously I wasn't thinking that I was moving into block it. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's not bad. Um, but yeah. it happens to everybody that there are these blind spots, and it's it's difficult to to notice it before making the move because in this position your pawn is protected, so you don't yeah. think there's any danger because it's it's protected. The issue is that once you move the knight, it blocks the bishop. So um, it's just to get used to analyzing um, whenever you sense, think yeah. of a move, the pros and cons of the move, and see mm -hmm. if it if it uh, has any issue. Sometimes it will be just like doesn't matter like the d6 bishop mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that that the queen is not protecting it but in yeah. this position the, the bishop that's an issue that you're not protecting the pawn so it can be taken mm -hmm. funnily enough um it was such a blind spot that your opponent played c4 so didn't notice it then you castled and now it would have been yeah, unfortunately yeah, yeah. even more powerful yeah, yeah. Yeah. um but he still didn't play it and then you played this move it was it I really think it's a blind spot. So it, it can really happen to the grandmasters yeah. as well. Uh, that it's it's there in the air for so many moves and then you protected it. Then you protected it. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't assume it was the cocktails. But mainly I assume it's, it was the cocktails. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah. No, because I didn't see I didn't see it. No, I don't yeah, no. I don't understand. No, it's okay. So All I want you to do is to to think of um before you make mm -hmm. a move, th visualize the square where your where your piece is going and what changes yeah. in the position. So if you just get used to systematically analyzing that a little bit, and in terms of tactics, um, loose and semi-loose pieces are the ones that make tactical motives possible, and the king. So when you're doing puzzles, um, if you yeah. pay attention to the king, loose pieces and semi-loose pieces. Semi-loose pieces, I call pieces like this e6 pawn. It's not unprotected. But, but it, it is it, it, it is a tagged and protected by the same okay. number of pieces. So I called it's not an official okay. term. I just made it up. But I think it's easier to remember it like this: that um, loose pieces can get into trouble with forks, with pins, um, yeah. and semi loose pieces too, because there's already one person or more more pieces attacking them, and the same yeah. amount of them are protecting. So just pay attention to loose semi loose pieces and the king in puzzles, and then you will always find the tactical motives. Against what should I do? Um, should I just castle? Castling would be a good idea, yes. And later, if you want to place the knight on d7, you can play queen e7 first, for instance, or bring the rook yeah. here. But I think you would like the rook on the f5 because it does it does have a role yeah. on the f5. So you can keep the rook on f8, place the queen on e7, and then bring the knight. Because I do think it's the right idea to bring the knight first. The bishop, this this position is too close for the bishop at the moment. You can't really yeah. develop it just yet. Yeah. Okay. All right, Anna. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking your time to give me a lesson, and I'm going to play some games now and hopefully put them somewhat into practice and uh, keep getting better and uh, get the Pog Champs to title. And, you uh, can do it, Fintan. You can do it. <laughs> I root for your puzzle rating as well, and also that you don't lose yeah. to your fiance. That channel bag is. Uh... <laughs> I will definitely. Oh. <laughs> at some point. There's, already, there's already been stipulations that. Uh, if I'm under the influence of alcohol, that it does not count. And uh, at some point, when Hannah gets to like a more reasonable level, like she only literally net, like just started playing yesterday, um, we'll play maybe some games on Twitch together. So it could be oh, fun. Sweat. But, uh, I'd love to yeah, see that. Fun. I'd love to see that. And I wanted <laughs> to say that I tuned into your podcast the other day, and I really enjoy it. So you oh, guys really? should check out the podcast of <laughs> Fintan and Hannah. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you so much. That's very sweet. You're too nice. Um, but uh i will message message i'll message you next week if you don't if you're busy and uh we'll we'll pencil something in sure you can, uh, absolutely fit in again it's next week but thank you so much for taking the time i really appreciate it you're and, very uh, welcome on, on the stream i'm sorry that i'm a boomer and we eventually <laughs> got it going and we'll get rid of the ampersand one day no i'm joking. but uh all right cheers cheers have a great day yeah. finton and everybody <laughs> over at finton's channel and i'll see you next week at some point perhaps thank you very much ciao ciao I, oh, okay. what did I do so. with my setup? Here I am. How's everybody doing today? I hope that you guys enjoyed today's session with Finton. We are learning. We are learning. I do want to see the Ampassant t-shirts. I think that would be great. Or Sharpie on the forehead. Or maybe learning from that dating show and Ampassant on the chest. But in any case, the Ampassant rule is important at chess. <laughs> it is important at chess. I hope that you guys had a fun time learning. Do let me know what did you think of the session. How do you evaluate Finton's chances at Pogchamps? 
Now you have seen some of the sessions with Hafu. I already had two coaching sessions with Hafu. This was my first session with Finton and I would love to know your thoughts. Oh my. <laughs>